For this video, I'll be working through question 2 of the 2016 uh, level 2 physics exam on uh, electricity and magnetism. <coughs> question 2 uh, Static electricity. In an uh, X ray machine, a heating element um, releases electrons from a negatively charged plate called the cathode. Um, the electrons are then heated uh, and then accelerated by an electric field that exists between the cathode and positively charged tungsten plate called an anode or the anode the cathode and the anode are connected high volt connected to a high voltage source of 20,000 volts the distance between the cathode and the anode is um, five centimeters uh, the beam of electrons causes x-rays to be released from the cathode charge on the so it gives you the charge of the electron mass of the electron um, and here's the setup here we've got the cathode and um, this is where the electrons are generated here's the electron there buzzing to the anode um, the distance between the two plates, or plates, whatever you want to call them, is 5 centimetres or 0 0.05 metres. Um, question 1a, calculate the field strength between the plates and state its direction. So if we have a look at our formula sheet, electric field is equal to the voltage divided by the distance. Um, so E is equal to V over D, which is equal to 20,000, divided by 0 0.05. 0.05 is equal to 400,000. 400,000, and we got volts per meter. There we go. Um, question B: State what type of energy an electron would have at the cathode, the negative plate, and what would happen to the energy if the electron moved towards the positive plate. So we have a wee diagram of it up here. We've got the electron. Just remember, electrons are negatively charged. Um, opposites attract, same repel, um, so the electrode is going to be repelled from the negative plate and it's going to be attracted towards the positive plate. So at, I'll just move this up a little bit, at the cathode, um, Right, so I've sort of said at the cathode it has electric potential. Um, once it leaves, um, electric potential is converted to kinetic energy, and that's really about it. Uh, electric potential energy, chill energy, is converted into kinetic energy. There we go. So that sort of makes sense. When it's here, it's got a potential. Um, it's sitting sort of. We, when you think of about, you think of electric fields in terms of gravitational fields. Um, you can flip this up on that side and say, up here it's sort of raised up high and it wants to fall towards the anode. This is a terrible analogy. Um, but anyway, so it's got potential, and as it falls towards the anode or is attracted to the anode. Uh, it gains kinetic energy until it hits the anode, and then all that kinetic energy is, I suppose it's still there, it's just transformed to, transformed to heat or what have you call it. Right, next question. Calculate the speed of the electron as it reaches the anode, positive plate. Right, so we've just said previously that the potential energy is converted into the kinetic energy. Yep, and on our formula sheet, we have the electric potential, um, the electric, well, the electric potential energy is equal to the electric field times the charge times the distance. So let's write that down. Um, I put a delta in front of that just so you don't get confused with the electric field. Um, but either way, right, so that is equal to the electric field times the charge times the distance, which is equal to half mv squared. Right, so you could just work out what this number is, times it by 2, divide by the mass, and then square root it. Um, or you can do a little bit of algebra and save yourself some work. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the half to the other side. So we're going to times both sides by 2. 
So we're going to have 2e times q times d is equal to mv squared. Now we're going to divide both sides by m. So we're going to move the m because we're trying to find the velocity. It says up here, calculate the speed of the electron. We're trying to find the velocity. Um, I'll just divide both sides now by m. Divide, divide, that cancels it out. Now all we have to do is to square it both sides to get rid of the squared up here and we get left with v is equal to square root 2eqd divided by m. Right, and I might as well put some numbers in just so it's easier to follow so you know what's what. Um, 2 is obviously just 2. Electric field is, calculate that over the page, 400,000 volts per meter, 400, and I'm going to make that 4 times 10 to the 3, 5, because um, there are 5 zeros, uh, times charge on the electron, which is given 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, and you see that, right there. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times the distance, which is 5 centimeters, say somewhere here. There you go. 0 0.05, always make sure it's in meters. 0 0.05 divided by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kgs. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kg, and I'll leave the units out right. So if you plug that into your calculator and calculate it all through, it should come out as 8.39 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, oh no, no, no positive 7 meters per second minus 1, which is fairly fast. But not that, I'll double check that, whether that's actually a, a positive or a minus. I'm fairly certain it's a, a, min, a positive. I'll double check it. And it is a positive speed. So that's pretty close. Well, not exactly close, but it's fairly close to the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Um, so these guys are getting really, really, really fast, um, which doesn't seem that realistic, but I suppose if it's x-rays, it must be getting up there. Right. In 1909, uh, Millikan used two obviously charged metal plates to keep an oil drop from falling at terminal velocity when he was experimenting to find the charge on the electron. A modified form of this experiment keeps an oil drop stationary. Uh, the diagram below shows part of the equipment. I've actually done this experiment before. It's actually quite neat. Um, only thing it doesn't mention is these wee dots wiggle around in what's called Brownian motion. So kind of hard to sort of see what you're doing. But anyway, so you got a stationary drop. That plate's charged to a negative charge, or some would have a voltage positive charge, um, and this is your microscope for looking at them. Um, discussed how it is possible to make an oil drop stationary between the plates. In your comprehensive answer, you should identify the forces acting on the drop, describe how the forces combine to cause the oil drop to be stationary, explain what type of charge the oil must have in order to remain stationary. So literally, we're just gonna answer these bullet points. This is gonna be the structure of our answer. So bullet point one, I'm even going to put a bullet point there if you can see it. Yeah, the forces acting at gravity in the electric field. So let's write that down. Forces acting on the drop uh, gravity, oh, I should put the, but whatever, rotational bracket weight. and electric force. There we go. So we're just neglecting air resistance entirely, um, which is kind of bad because it says falling at terminal velocity, which means air resistance 
um, is included, but in order to make make it stationary, um, use no any resistance because it's not moving. So that'll be the forces on it once it's stationary. Um, describe how the forces can combine to cause oil drop to be stationary. Um, so in order for the drop to remain stationary, I'll just write that properly, stationary. The net force has got to be zero, so let's just write that. The net force must equal zero. In other words, all the forces need to be balanced. So the electric force must be upwards, act upwards. So what we have here is, if we have this, we uh, we drop here. I'll make a drop myself over to the side. We'll have FG pointing down. So in order for that, that's a force that would accelerate it. In order for not for it not to accelerate, you need a F subscript E an electric force um, acting upwards. So these vectors add together to equal zero. So the zero net force, which means it's either at a constant velocity or it's not moving at all. Right, so that's the second bullet point, how they can combine to remain stationary. What type of charge the oil drop must have in order to remain stationary. So, um, let's write this properly. In order for the drop to experience and upwards force upwards I've got electric force electric force it must have uh, what will it have it'll have a negative charge to bracket charge and let's just look at that so it's got to have a negative charge because it needs to be attracted to the positive plate um, and or and conversely repelled by the negative plate. So that there answers the last question. Um, just a little side note about this actual experiment. All the drops, so when you spray them in, random chance, some of them become positively, some of them become negatively charged just through sort of chance. All the ones that are positively charged whiz past and uh, land on the negative plate. All the ones that are negatively charged tend just to float around and then you, what you do is you look for one of them, um, measure the radius of it or the di diameter, you can work out its mass from that, then you can work out the force required to hold it up because it's just gravitational force and then you can find the charge because you've got the F is equal to EQ, you know the electric field so you can work out the charge of the electron and that was how the first, well that was how the experiment sort of came to be and discovered the unit of charge.